Hello everyone, CDNet here with another update from the Evidence ecosystem and when I say update this time I kind of mean redo. Uh, I want to take another look at Gondola Finance because um, well the first video I ever did on Gondola Finance we had a lot of static screens as the one you're looking at right now but this time you have my face. Um, last time I did the Gondola video I was really realizing that sometimes you know if I'm taking a little bit longer to explain something uh, you're gonna need to have something to distract you from, uh, you know, whatever's in the background. At least me personally, uh, whenever I'm in a presentation of anything, if you're on the slide longer than X amount of seconds, I get bored and distracted. So I assume that's the same with the video. Anyway, so uh, I was waiting for a new opportunity and today Gondola launched their uh, WBTC, their red Bitcoin um, product as well. So let's get into it. So just to cover this one more time, if you have an asset on Avalanche that is not native to the Avalanche blockchain, uh, so previously that would have been Ethereum or USDT, of course USDT is also coming natively to the Avalanche blockchain later. Um, but if you have an asset that's not native to the Avalanche blockchain, you can get it here, but it's kind of a trick. Um, so what it does is it doesn't send the Ethereum over from the Ethereum blockchain to the Avalanche blockchain. Instead, it locks it in a contract on Ethereum and someone, the bridge operator, issues a new token which represents that Ethereum on the Avalanche blockchain. Now this works, you know, that token is worth, it's backed by one real Ethereum, so we use it as one Ethereum. So there, if you use the Avalanche Ethereum bridge, the output you would get is actually just a Ethereum on the Avalanche blockchain. But the Avalanche Ethereum bridge is not the only bridge that you can use to move Ethereum, or indeed Bitcoin, to the Avalanche blockchain. There is also the zero exchange bridge. Now both work exactly the same, but because they are two different parties, they do not offer the same token on the Avalanche blockchain. So they are both backed by a real Ethereum or a real Bitcoin, but they are not themselves the same token. Now this can cause some issues when you're using certain apps. So I'm just taking all of Swap as a random example. There is a Ether AVEX LP pool, but it would only accept the Ether that was transferred to the Ether Ethereum bridge. In this case, it does not accept the um, zero exchange bridged Ethereum. But in a way, that's strange because they are both just one Ethereum. So how do we solve this? Well, Gondola offers the solution. So Gondola works similar to how Snowball Finance works, right? Which are stable faults. So while in Snowball Finance, you're trading DAI, USDT and BNB against each other, uh, with very low slippage because they should all be worth exactly one dollar. Uh, Gondola does the same except you trade the same token but through a different bridge against each other. So if, for example you can trade CDI which is the zero exchange bridge DAI for DAI which is, comes from the Ether Ethereum bridge. This way you can basically solve that when an app uses a different kind of version uh, you can still use it, you just need to swap through Gondola. So the way that these pools are balanced is kind of through arbitrage in a way. If you're depositing a token that's underrepresented, you gain a little bonus uh, in your pool tokens. Or if you swap against the token that is uh, more represented, you gain a little bonus. If you do it the other way around, if you're basically taking the token that there's already less of, you pay a small fine, if you will. This way it maintains the balance between these pools and it opens up arbitrage opportunity for those with liquidity for it. So I just swapped a little bit of AVEX for CBTC and I'm going to add it to this pool. Uh, as you can see, you get a little bonus because CBTC is slightly underrepresented in this pool. Uh, it also gives you a warning about impermanent loss. If you're not yet familiar with that, uh, please reach out in the comments or over Twitter or whatever. I'll be happy to either explain it to you or refer you to the right resource. But let's add it to the pool. And as you can see right now, I have 0.036% of the pool. Now, last video I made the mistake of thinking I was there at this point, but now you actually need to stake your uh, pool tokens as well. Now, staking isn't yet live for Red Bitcoin WBTC, uh, but once it's live on the 20th, you will just be able to press stake max, uh, in this case in the WBTC pool, um, and then just stake, and it will stake directly in the Gondola app, and you can earn some GDL rewards. The other option would be to use Yieldjack, uh, works exactly the same, you just press whichever percentage you want to stake in Yieldjack, and in Yieldjack it will auto compound. If you're not familiar with Yieldjack, I would recommend you to follow my video on that one as well. 
But yeah, guys, that should be it. That should be your intro to Gondola. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a bit more than from the first video. And I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye.